Welcome to our service this morning. The Lord bless you. Amen. Um, we're going to continue our service by singing um, from our CGS number 15. CGS number 15. Um, we also want to welcome our internet audience. The Lord bless you for joining us. We are the Apostolic Faith Church. We are just about to start. Our, we have started our devotional service and we'll be singing our first congregational song, CGS number 15, and we'll take verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. Verses 1, 2, 4, and 5, after the introduction by the organist.
CGS number 17. CGS says, through all the changing scenes of life, in trouble and in joy, the praise of my God shall still my heart and tongue employ. We're going to take um, verse 1, 3, and 5 of this song. Verse 1, 3, and 5 after the introduction. Yes, 88, but we're using tune and can it be, so orchestra you will sing with us please, we're using tune and can it be, we'll take um, verse 1, 3 and 6, verses 1, 3 and 6.
prayer in the morning, whisper a prayer at noon. We'll um, take all the verses of this song together, still seated, after the introduction. for prayer is um, it's me it's me it's me oh lord standing in the need of prayer we're going to take all the verses of this song um, standing for those who can stand we'll take all the verses standing up and after which we shall be led in congregational prayer the orchestra will sing with us as well it's me it's me it's me oh lord <laughs> God, we just want to thank you for a time like this. Thank you for your love and care over us. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to this world of sin and woe to give his life a ransom for many. Thank you for your word, your word of comfort and cheer, Lord. We thank you for your spirit been guiding us all the way, the great comforter. We thank you, O oh God, for health and healing. We thank you for food we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe, thank the houses we live in, O oh God, the, the places of work you provided for your people, for colleges, for schools, O oh Lord, everything you've done to make life worth living. We just want to thank you, Lord. We praise you, O oh Lord for this great gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, to which, oh God, you have 
expose us to. Yes. You've taught us from time to time. Even today, oh Lord, you have shown us the way once again. Yes. Lord, we look up to you because we know in ourselves we are very weak and frail. Yes. But we thank you because you are a mighty God. Yes. You can uphold us. You can keep us from falling. Lord, you can guide us from day to day. Lord, we just want to continue to look unto you. Yes. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You want to be obedient children. Lord, you're going to speak to us once again today. Lord, plant your words in our hearts. Okay? Help us to live by them. That um, our hope may not be in vain. We are looking forward to when Jesus Christ will come back. Lord, prepare us, O oh God. Make us worthy instruments in your hand. That we may serve you here acceptably, Lord. In thought, in word, in action, in our relationship. Lord, we want you to guide us and help us to be true and faithful in everywhere. Lord, as we stand today before you, Lord, we just want you to shower your blessings upon us. Lord. Blessings of salvation, Amen. sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Lord, renew our strength, O oh God. Amen. Wherever this gospel of Jesus Christ will be preached today, we want souls to be saved, O oh Lord. Amen. To be won into your kingdom, O oh Lord. Amen. Do this and more for us, O oh Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Our Bible reading for this morning is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 30. We are reading from verses 1 to 12. I will exalt thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my force to rejoice over me. O oh Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O oh Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Amen. Thou hast kept me alive, Amen. that I should not go down to the pit. Amen. Sing unto the Lord, O oh ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anchor endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Yes. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto thee, Lord, I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Yea, O Lord, Amen. and have mercy upon me. Amen. Lord, be thou my helper. Amen. Thou hast turned for me my morning into dancing. Amen. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and guarded me with gladness. Amen. Last verse. To thee, to the end, thy, sorry, to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Amen. It suits my doubts 
and calms my fears and he dries all my tears the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power it reaches to the highest mountain it flows to the lowest Give me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. It will never, it will never, it will never lose its power. to the Bible portion that we have read. We're going to read again this. This is 5 and 11. Psalm 30, verse 5. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. 11. Thou hast turned for me my morning into dancing. Amen. Thou hast put off my sackcloth Amen. and guarded me with gladness. Amen. That just tells us that every morning have an ap aftermath. Every weeping there should also be an aftermath, an outcome of the weeping, a tangible one. Just want us to reflect back on the 36 days of prayer and fasting that we had up to last Sunday. Did you receive your portion after your weeping? Can there's something tangible that you can hold on to? In order that you may be able to say, like the psalmist, that weeping may endure for a night, but that joy will come in the morning. Um, this Psalm 30 that we've just read is the song of David. This, this is the song relating to the dedication of his house, his mansion. You can call it his palace. <laughs> This is somebody who did not have an expectation that he could reach such heights. But God blessed him Amen. and lifted him up Amen. and stood by him. Amen. You remember that David went through a lot of turmoil in his life, a lot of fighting war to the extent that God told him that his hands were full of blood and therefore he was not qualified to build a house for him. But now David himself, uh, after he, this is after the dedication of David's house himself that he wanted to build for God and God said he should leave it for his child because he, then, then what I want to relate to that is that he's somebody that has gone through a lot in his life. But now, in Psalm 30, he had an aftermath. He could show a tangible reward, and he, he can let us know that uh, weeping endured for a night. 
it's, it's easier for us to just say night. But sometimes it could be many nights that weeping endured. Could be years of nights that weeping endured. But you know, is one moment, yes. one jot, yes. one day, Amen. one hour, Amen. one second, Amen. then joy cometh. Amen. One morning, Amen. joy cometh. Amen. So may God help us Amen. that joy, our morning, will soon come. Amen. That our morning is already here. Amen. So that we can also, like David, look back and say, the Lord, he is God. Yes. We can also, like Aaron, look back and say, the Lord, he is God. Amen. We can also, like Moses, after they crossed the Red Sea, look back and say, the Lord, he is God. Amen. Because as our God, as far as our God is concerned, there is nothing that he cannot do. So, this reminds us that as God did it for David, he is still the same God today. Yes. But we have to go to God and say, after those 36 days of concentration, of prayers, and fasting, of tarrying, of weeping, what is the tangible outcome. And if we cannot have that tangible outcome, thank God we have an opportunity to go back to him yes. and say, I want a tangible outcome. And for all of us that had a tangible outcome out of those nights and days of tarrying, we can ask God to improve on it. Because God has the power to do all things. Yes. There may be people that are here. They may not even relate to the story. Well, basically, at the beginning of the year, our leaders advise us to come to church every evening to pray. So throughout the month of January and the early February up to last Sunday, we tarried in prayer in the church for at least a one and a half hour session. And we were also advised those that come fast, come fast. And um, um, so people just, we just came to church and moan and weep at God. And quite truly, our God answers prayers yes. because in the midst, of their prayer meeting, we ask people to testify for what God has done for them. And so many people were able to stand up and say, this is it. This is what has, God has done for me. And so many people were looking forward to last day. You know, it came to a point when it should have been stopped. We were told that there has been so many feedback that it should continue. And it was extended for one further week. So that is what we are trying to look back and say, after that period of mourning, of, sorry, of mourning, of weeping, did you get the outcome? If you did, ask God to improve. If you did not, ask God that you are still waiting. As David did here, um, I remember one of my friends was just talking to him. He's, one of the, he's an associate prof at one of the unis in, uh, in America. And uh, he has published many books. One of them is titled, I Have Cried. Now I Am Fine. Um, the whole the life story is, that one is just about his life story. He's published so many other textbooks that are used as standard textbooks at American institutions. But the, this one was just focusing on his life story because he was really, really poor. Mm. To the extent that, you know, we were more privileged in the, the school we went to and lived within the school uh, environment. He's only had, he has to either walk in three miles in, 
three miles back, six miles each day to go to school and return. And if he's lucky, he can get a bicycle. His life was difficult. And we, you know, there's some people when they, you have palm, palm, palm kennels, and then you can have the seed. Uh, when you do the palm fruit, you can have the seed, you can have the oil. His own was not there. He will go to the bush and look for the ones that has dropped, the, the bed has dropped, the, the kennel that the bed has dropped, and cracked it to sell, to have something. You know, but what? God never forgets his own. Yes. At a point in time, during the end of uh, his, uh, it, it was Waiyek in those years, um, he did like his end of his secondary school, he had alphas in almost all his subjects. That is A1, 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 A1. And uh, he had no brother, no sister, no big man that could give him a job. So he said, I used to go out to the streets and just give out my CV. And at that time, there was Nitel. And this man said, he told me, the person that gave him the job looked at his CV and said, how can someone be so clever and don't have a job? And then called him for interview and gave him a job. He worked in, in, in those years, Nigerian AT&T. And it was in that process, one way or the other, uh, something happened, he found himself in America. And, and that was all he had was that his uh, uh, YA papers. He said, he, he said, by some when I arrived, there was no way to stay. He, his life was difficult. He said, I was living under the bridge and working in the restaurants. And he lived there until at uh, uh, washing pots. At a point in time, uh, he managed to finish his first degree. <coughs> he pushed on, found some way to stay, finish his master's, and then did his PhD. He's now a prof. And then he can write, I have cried. Now I am fine. So we see that God never forgets his own. Yes. And, and then he, 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 you can put, if you, you know, I can only tell you something, something that lasts for two minutes. But when you look at that, then you see where he is now. He can afford to say, I am fine. So that is somebody that is not in our midst. You know, I invited him to church and said, look, in Washington there we have apostolic faith. He said, I have been there. He even used to attend the church when he was in Nigeria. But I'm still talking to him. You can still go back. He said he's, work, he's, he's walking his way and, and uh, he, 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 will, he will do his best to attend. But you know what? How about for us? We have every reason to say that we have cried. And now we are fine. Yes. Because that God who remember David, that cried and cried and cried year in, year out. And Saul was chasing him as if there was nothing else to chase. And eventually, he could find himself in a palace. He has then the right to let us know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. May God help us to continue to trust on. Amen. Because we have even more supreme right now to tell God that we want to move forward. As he commanded Moses to make sure you move forward. There was no need to go back to Egypt. Make sure you move forward. Yes. And in moving forward, he knew that he was going to guide, that he was going to be there. And in, in the, the same psalm, we go to uh, 126. I want to read verse 6. Verse 6. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, Amen. bringing his shifts with him. If you think of the farmer, and all of, I mean, most of us may relate to it, and I know some of us are. Uh, born and bred in London and don't really understand how the farming operation takes place. 
maybe some of you have gone in school visit. Um, well, the one that I, I know is that in you, uh, uh, our teachers never used to have servants. We did the work for them. Compound work, we'll be ready. The boys, we build the ridges. We, they call it ridges. They will measure from here to there, and you till the floor, till the floor, till, till. Then the, the, the surrounding floors, you make it like a small, a small hill or something, something a bit elevated from, from the ground. And then you will put the seed in there. You know, you have like, you're hanging, you know, you, that sophistication was not there to have a hanging basket that you could put the seed. But one way or the other, seed will come into your hand. You don't just pick one and put, and then you, it, there is a measurement that you must understand. You pick one and put, and pick one and put, and like that. We were trained how to do farming. So when you are, uh, when uh, your parents are ready for farming, uh, it was either you are trained at home or you are trained at school. Either way, you must know how to farm. So, uh, or you have a combination of the two. And like uh, my, my family was really sometimes tempestuous that the same day that the they, they, that they, they burn the, the, the rubbles, the same day we must plant. So every one of us will go in like soldiers ready. It's once the heat is, is hitting the ground and you are putting the seed in because we don't want someone else to come and take the land. So, you know, like that, like that, like that. But at the end of the day, a farmer, if they've got a poor yield and they want to plant again, it would sorrow in the heart. It would pain. They will be putting one seed and be praying, God, let this year not be like last year. Please, God, improve. So, and then, you know, for those that don't go one seed at a time, you see them carrying their basket, taking from the basket, and just spraying it on the floor. And, the, you know, when you have had a bad yield, you are bound to be saying something. You are bound to be talking to the seed that this time around it must yield it must yield when my mother used to go when they used to buy a chicken uh you keep they keep it in the house for three days and cover it with the basket so that they don't run around after three days they will just take the chicken and show the dog the, the lintel said look when you go this is the door to come back and god is wise you buy 5.30 p.m., you see that chicken just, they just come back home. Uh, just, you, you, they, you bought it in the market very far away. You just keep it in there. Three days, you just, uh, even that house that you put it, you, you don't, it's not free. It's not free. Just covered in the basket. And after that, say, I, I want to send you out. Look at this lintel. Look at this door. And then after you've eaten, this is where you come back to. Surprisingly, they came, they all come back. To, they all came back to the same house. By 5.30 p.m., you will see the chicken quite close to home, quite close to home, quite close to home. Everyone will part, and the chicken will jump into the house and then and stay till the next day. So, um, so the, 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 the farmer that has got sorrow in his heart will be planting with sorrow and weeping and praying. That weeping is to God, that he wants his next yield to be even more sumptuous, more pronounced, more, more profuse pro than the one that they have just um, uh, harvested. So that is why we are, we are told there, in that Psalm 126, verse 6, he that go forward and weep it bearing precious seeds. Precious seeds. Yes. How about the, the nursing mother? Are they not like these farmers? There's a precious seed there in the stomach. My wife used to say, when, when you know, we were uh, having the one by one, we'll be talking to the person in the stomach so that when they come out, they will know exactly what the situation of life. So, and then uh, you, you'll be surprised how many nursing mothers speak to their children while they are in there. So that when they come out, 
they will have a kind of pattern to follow. The farmer, it is like that. The pregnant women, it is like that. You will have to continue to nurture the seed that is in you. Yes. And so, so, so is the idea here of the farmer bearing, I mean, going further to, forward to, pre, uh, to, 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 to plant the seed. Small seeds like that, they will be just planting it with prayer that it will come out good. But what does the Bible say? It said, that farmer shall doubtless come again rejoicing, Amen. bringing his sheaves with him. Amen. When we say sheaves, it's not one. We can't just go to the farm and finish everything one day. The Bible is very clear. It's, it means sheaves. That means many. Many. So we are, we are in a position where we can trust God that the precious seed we have sown, the weeping that has endured, that endured for over 36 days, we want God Amen. to help Amen. each and every one of us Amen. to bring our sheaves Amen. with us. When the sheaves are brought, then it improves our situation. Yes. Either we sell, or we eat, or we give out, or a combination. It's frustrating after you've planted and you do not have the shifts. May God help us not to plant in vain. Yes. There might have been some people that were not part and parcel of it, but they have the opportunity today. Yes to weep and plant that one day they will come rejoicing, bringing also their shields with them. Suffering saints may be grieved with tears. There may be something that makes you tearful something that grieves your heart, the sorrows, the pain that you cannot explain to somebody else. You know we have a channel yeah. that we can channel and it gets to the right person. Yeah. The right, the person that un only understands that language that you are speaking. Calamities will come in life. It's part of living. And sometimes we Christians, we bear more than the fair share of the burden. But may God help us not to be like David, <laughs> jealous in the prosperity of the wicked. Let us just see that what is before us, that God is able yeah. to perfectly make a way yeah. for us to overcome. We can be in a state of affliction, but we are promised that we will. The Bible says, doubtless. come again with rejoicing. It's, it's doubtless. That means definitely we will come with rejoicing. Amen. Absolutely. It's not mixing words there. It's an affirmative. The one thing is that even that weeping must not hinder our sowing. We cannot fold our, hand, our, our hands and sit down and look at the situation. We must continue to weep. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be difficult, 
but we must continue. So people will be, will, because they're happy when they see the overwhelming love of God in the heart. Yeah. Some people weep. I, I sometimes say, how about if I had a, a face like a cow? How about if you had a, a face like a goat? Who would know? We, we, we wouldn't have a chance to know how it should have, how, otherwise it should have been. So we have every right to thank God that he has made us as human yes. and has made us to appreciate. He wants us to appreciate the state that we are. Yes. In bad times, in good times, he wants us to appreciate that he is there. Yes. That we will doubtless come one day rejoicing. Yes. That no matter what has happened in the night, one morning we will come smiling. Amen. And each, you know, if they, let's not be like the children of Israel that we talk about. There is always a time of smiling for the Christian. And don't tell me that your problem is more than enough. Don't tell me that your problem overwhelms you that you cannot praise God, that you cannot weep, that you cannot find a moment to say to God, thank you. And after you've said thank you, you weep again. Because other, there are other burdens, many other things have befallen, but you know where the source of the first victory was, yes. and you want to capitalize on it. The first thing that should make us to weep is our sins. And it's called godly sorrow. Yes. See, if we don't have the joy of overcoming godly sorrow for sin, it will make it difficult for us to have the joy of rejoicing and bringing our precious, um, bringing our sheaves with us. Sin kills. Sin just brings a necessary mixture. Sin just brings confusion. See, when you are in sin, you're bound to have so many ideologies. And a lot of the ideologies is from the devil. And therefore, it doesn't give you that channel to say, this is God. I'm going to follow him. I'm going to trust him. So the first weeping we need to do is the weeping of godly sorrow. Godly sorrow for sin. Godly sorrow asking for repentance. Even those of us that are saved, we still have the right to tell God we have made mistakes. Yes. And that God is a, an all-forgiving God. Yes. He is able yes. to forgive us and to forget. Yes. Because they that sow in tears of godly sorrow to the Spirit shall, of course, at the end, reap life everlasting. Yes. And they will have, indeed, a joyful harvest as well. Yes. And I want us to open to Galatians. Chapter 6. I read. I read verse 7 and 8. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, 
that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Amen. When we speak like this, we the same word that binds you is the same word that binds me. When we have opportunity to weep to God, let us do so. Don't be indifferent. Don't want to stand out. I'm not doing what they're doing. I don't know this game that the children play and they call it Call of Duty. When it is declared, it's a Call of Duty. There's no army. There's, I mean, there's no army and you belong to a certain battalion, once they say Battalion 10, for example, are going to engage in the war front, they're not going to leave you out as a soldier. All, everybody there have to move. It's the same thing in the church. When a declaration is made, it's to all of us. Anybody, the army has the power that anybody that doesn't move when instructions are given, yes, they go through the military tribunal and at the end will end up in guard room and at the end maybe imprisonment. But the God in the church, we have no such powers no. than to just make it free will. Mm -hmm. But it's like saying... This is the way it works here in it. But if you then decide you want to do less than is required, the choice is between you and God. But don't forget, the Bible has made it very clear to be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Assuming we just reap it. And it stays with us. We could say, well, it, it was a matter of choice, but still look unto God because He's also able to make the situation to make a change to the situation. But it is like our elders used to say to us, how many of you will hear that a fellow brother is sick? And you won't pray for him because you hate him. Or a sister is not, is not well. And you won't pray for her because you hate her. It shouldn't happen. So therefore, what affects the eyes also affects the nose. Therefore, we are together in that cluster of faith. In that cluster, in that community of God. We are together. So... I know of somebody who says that some friends are not worth having because they're not listening to what the person is saying. So because one day when his or her ways will be revealed, then I will be involved in either praying, visiting, caring, one way or the other. But sometimes these things are inevitable. So may God help us that when we are told this is the way. Weep now that you will rejoice later. May God help us to weep, Amen. to seek him and to find him because we are together. You know, when the misfortune happened to our dear sister Lawson, and she was brought in here and kept here in the coffin. The church was full. We couldn't even have seat for everybody. Because her life was a synergy to many others. And so also, as we gather together, our lives should be radiating 
and impacting on each other such that we are we when anything happens we will be together in that cluster to come out but you know don't be indifferent weep when you should weep and rejoice when there is time for rejoicing there is also a reward gospel according to saint matthew chapter chapter 5 Verse 4, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Amen. So if we don't weep, who do we, we, we then, what do we expect to be comforted for? If we don't mourn, what will we expect to be comforted for? What we should do? is to break God like the psalmist and ask God to give us a broken heart, Amen. a heart that the word of God can melt easily, a heart that, you know, assimilates the word of God. We will never stop preaching salvation until Jesus comes, because that is what he wants us to come. So salvation is at the center of everything that we do. It is the new cross by which our faith foundation is built. It is the hope that will take us to heaven. So anyone sitting down here has, that has not made that first move to make his life or her life right with God is not helping his or her process to confess our sins and ask God for forgiveness and then surrender everything into his heart, into his hands, and he is able to deal with them. And also in the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 16, there were a group of people that were mourning. Verse 10. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. This was Mary Magdalene that basically after she saw Jesus, she went and told the disciples they were still mourning and they were weeping. I've just read verse 10. I want to read verse 11. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. So Jesus appeared to those who mourn. Jesus appears to those who weep. Jesus appears to those who cry. May God help us Amen. to mourn in expectation that our Lord and Savior will, will appear to comfort us. Amen. It is his promise that blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. So it's not in vain. Our tears are not in vain. Amen. Our sister used to say, she's passed on to glory now, used to say that we are not just talking to the A when we pray. We are talking to an almighty God that is listening to us. Yes. And it's not, it's not a joking time. It is a precious time. Yeah. Weeping did not start today. It started right from the time of Abraham. It started in Genesis. The word weeping appears 64 times in the Bible. But it's not just only in the New Testament. It's not just only in the, te in the Old Testament. It was right from the beginning of the books. Genesis 23, verse 2. And Sarah died 
in Kajat and in Kiraja Jaba. The same is Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. That was an incident of weeping right from the first book in the Bible. What about the last book? Let's go to the last book in the Bible, Revelation. Chapter 5. You know, it's so easy when we weep, we look for someone to console us. In most cases, the people that will bring the most consolation are those who have passed through that experience. They have the right words, they have the right attitude, they will have better understanding of what you are going through. And the person that has done all, had all of those experiences, the best person is Jesus Christ. In most cases, when we weep, the words of elders, the words of our elders are words of wisdom. We feel comforted when they speak to us in order to relieve us from our sorrows and pain. I will read Revelation chapter 5, I read verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book Amen. and to lose the seven seals thereof. Amen. We must weep until we hear one of our elders saying to us, weep not. Then we would have achieved our end. These don't expect anyone here as an elder to come and tell you we not. That elder, God knows where he's going to come from. I know of one, and that is Jesus Christ in heaven. And we want to pray. We want to ask God for tangible evidence of our weeping. We must Whatever he has given to us, we have the right to ask him to improve upon it. And those that we have not gotten tangible evidence, we want to ask God, we want it. God has no time limit. A thousand years in his eyes is like a day. We have an opportunity to weep and mourn until the elder tells us, weep no more. The altar is open for prayers.
let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that if we weep, you will comfort us. You know those things that are ahead of us. You know where the shoe pinches every child of yours. You know our nagging problems. We thank you because you have a balm for everyone. Amen. Jesus, come and help us. Amen. The helper of the helpless, please send help down. Amen. Those who are listening to us, Father, help them too. Amen. Some have managed to come, but you know everything about us. Whatever needs to be fixed, fix it. Amen. In our bodies, Father, fix them. Amen. Whatever provision we lack, Lord, provide. Amen. Those who have problems that they cannot even tell a friend, Jesus, you know, serve them all. Amen. Bless us and make us a blessing. Yes. We want to come in and bring in our chiefs. Yes. We don't want to be like that servant who hid the blessing that he should have used and get more. Lord, help us to make use of those blessings Amen. so we can win souls for you. Amen. Give us complete victory. Amen. Let us go home rejoicing Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.